Welcome to our third video describing how electrons fill the atom's orbitals and the shape of those orbitals. In the last video, we began to cover the second principle energy level, n equals 2, specifically the s orbitals. This video stays in the n equals 2 level as we begin to look at the second subshell, specifically the p orbitals. On the periodic table, the first period had two elements, hydrogen and helium, and those two electrons filled the 1s orbital. We see the second period has eight elements. The first two, lithium and beryllium, also filled the s subshell, the 2s orbital. Again, the Pauli exclusion principle tells us those orbitals are full. Let's look at the remaining six elements in the second principle energy level, and using boron we start our review of these elements. Boron is the first element with an electron filling the new p orbital. With five positively charged protons and usually six neutrons holding the atom together, there are of course five electrons to remain electrically neutral. Remember the off-ball principle? We build up the electron cloud, the first two electrons going into the 1s orbital, and that spherical shell is full. The second, or 2s orbital, takes the third and fourth electron, and that spherical shell is full. Till now, we've only talked about the first quantum number n, the principal energy level, which describes the size of the orbital. Another quantum number, L, represents the angular momentum, and this tells us the shape of the orbital. When L equals 0, we have a spherical shape, the s orbitals. When L equals 1, as it does for these next six elements, we mark out the path of the first p electron. We start to notice a kind of a dumbbell shape. The p really stands for principle, but in this case, let's use it to remember the shape of the orbital, and we'll say p is for polar. See how the electrons are more common around what would be considered a polar cap of the atom? This is the 2p1 electron. Next in the p subshell is carbon. With one more proton, we add one more electron to remain neutral. Like boron, carbon has six neutrons. Building up the atom, again the 1s and 2s are full, it would be easy to assume this electron will, as required by the Pauli exclusion principle, have opposite spin and go into that same p orbital. However, because it is harder for a second electron with opposite spin to go into the same p orbital, an electron with the same spin will take an easier route and start a slightly different p orbital. This second p orbital, we see at right angles, are perpendicular to the previous one. The shape of the orbitals is determined by the L number, and all electrons with an L number of 1 have this same polar shape, just at a different location or orientation around the nucleus. This is the 2p2 electron. Nitrogen, symbol N, with the atomic number of 7, we add another proton, an atomic mass of approximately 14, we'll have to add another neutron. Nitrogen will have 7 electrons, to recap, 2 electrons in the 1s shell, 2 electrons in the 2s, and 2 electrons in 2 perpendicular p orbitals. The third electron, again with the same spin as the other two existing p orbital electrons, goes into the third of the three polar shaped regions. Filling three separate p orbitals with an electron of similar spin first is called Hund's rule, which is, every orbital in a subshell will be occupied by one electron before the subshell is occupied by two, and all of the electrons in those subshells will have the same spin. We see the electrons make out another polar shape, this time along the third and final axis. Because this shape is similar to or aligned to an arbitrary x, y, and z axis, we can label these the 2px, 2py, and 2pz orbitals. Again, remember, one electron, all with the same spin, goes into each of the three p orbitals first. For nitrogen, this third electron in the p orbital is the 2p3 electron. Looking back at the periodic table and the six elements we identified in the p shell, hopefully you can guess the electron orbitals for the next three elements. We know the shape of the p orbitals, and according to Hund's rule, the first three electrons in the p orbitals all have the same spin, each going to a separate polar or orbital. And we know, according to the Pauli exclusion, that two electrons, one with spin up and one with spin down, fill up an orbital. So, oxygen, eight protons, eight neutrons, and eight electrons, this element's additional electron, with opposite spin, will go into one of the 2p, x, y, or z orbitals. There is no given order for which p orbital gets the electron first. Oxygen provides the 2p4 electron. Fluorine, 9 protons, 10 neutrons, and 9 electrons. We'll add the fifth electron to the p shell and go into a second or another one of the 2p, x, y, or z orbitals. Again, it will have opposite spin. This is the 2p5 electron. Finally, neon. We know because neon is a noble gas that the outer shell is going to be full. And we see that with 10 positively charged protons, 10 neutral neutrons, to hold the atom together, and 10 negatively charged electrons for an electrically neutral atom, the sixth electron is the final in the 2p, 
x, y, or z orbitals, and this completes all three of the p orbitals with two electrons each. The Pauli exclusion principle tells us we're done. The shell is full. Hopefully in this video you have seen how the p shell orbitals are filled as the six elements, boron through neon, each build up the atom by adding another electron. First, one electron with the same spin into each of the 2px, 2py, or 2pz orbitals. Finally, a second electron with opposite spin goes into those same three orbitals. In our next video, we will cover just a bit more about the subsequent s and p orbitals and talk a slight bit more about the quantum numbers. I hope to see you in those videos, and if you like these videos, please give them a thumbs up or a comment down below and help the channel grow by telling a friend or becoming a subscriber.